often asked by people, you know, if somebody wants to become a world champion, what do they do? And the very first bit of advice I give them is forget it. <laughs> I say, um, you don't become a world champion, it's, it's in your DNA. There was a race, there was a quest for what they called the holy grail of video games. Whoever could do a perfect game on Pac-Man. That start to finish, never miss a dot, never miss an energizer, never miss a prize, never miss a blue man. 256 screens, then you would achieve a perfect game. And on July 3rd, after six hours of play and not losing a single man, became the first person that ever did a perfect game on Pac-Man. In the early 1980s, video games were all the rage. I mean, arcades were everywhere. Whenever we went somewhere, it was the equivalent of a rock band showing up. Imagine the publicity of the greatest obsession in the world at the time, video games. And supposedly the best players in the world were coming. They were coming to your town. It was, uh, it was something where there were groupies. It was incredible. It was everywhere I went. I'll walk somewhere. People say, hey, Pac-Man. I'll say, that's Mr. Pac-Man to you. It brought me more media attention than I had imagined. I don't think there was a network that didn't call me. After 19 years, a video arcade classic has finally been conquered. I always wanted to do something that was unparalleled, something unequivocal. I was asked by a reporter, so have you done it? Not yet. I said, I'm not on the same quarter, I'm on the same man. <laughs> was actually built in 1955. My father acquired it in 1974. Uh, we're here seven days a week. The whole family's involved in the business and it's done real good for us. It's also been a blessing to me in video games because uh, this is where I got my start. Pac-Man carved out a part of my personality that strived for perfection that strive to be the absolute best that I could possibly be. I had to look at myself and I had to realize very unhappily that I couldn't just play video games forever, that I had to do something else. Our family business was the restaurants, it was chicken wings, it was hot sauce, and that same obsession that I had in the world of video games now transcended over into the business world. I became obsessed with the idea that I would know more about chicken wings, more about hot sauce than anybody in the world. I lived and breathed it every day, just like I did video games. When I'm in the store, I'm always looking at the placement on the shelf. It's sort of a cruel and vicious world. It's like the video game world. There's always somebody who's trying to bump you aside and you sort of fight fire with fire. You go in and you push for a little more space for yourself and uh, you sort of push the guy around a little. And unfortunately, when your back is turned, he's doing the same thing to you. It's a cat fight to stay on top. I never realized that a real work in the world and video game work, uh, they'd be so similar, or at least similar in nature. I always tell myself that if I can do in the business world what I can do in the arcade, and the situation will always go our way. Shortly after doing the perfect game, I sort of stood in my mind and I wondered what it was or what I would do that's going to top that. I had to begin to come up with something in my mind in a video game world that would be bigger and greater, that would draw more attention, more fame, 
I haven't shared the fact that I'm preparing for something with very many people. What it is I actually plan on doing, I haven't shared with anybody. I haven't even talked in my sleep about it. But what it is that I'm going to do will be a final, final chapter in the world of competitive video game playing for me. And if it happens, the world will know more than they knew with the perfect Pac-Man game. We'll see.